The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Right. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Every day, millions of women all over America serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is Parquet. Parquet Margarine, P-A-R-K-A-Y, it's wonderful. Now let's see what's going on in Summerfield. Gildersleeve's niece and nephew are in the parlor getting down to work. Are these your books, Leroy? Books? Sure, who's this thing? Well, kindly get them off the sofa. You're not supposed to dump them in the parlor anyway. Leroy, move them or I'll... Leroy, not so loud. Keep your shirt on. Hey, you didn't have to throw them on the floor. I can't wait all night. You dirty guy. Hey, I was going to use the sofa. Well, I've got it. You can study someplace else. Dad! Leroy. Nice work, Leroy. Now he'll be in here. Well, if you hadn't thrown my stuff all over the place. Leroy! Now we're even. You little... What's going on here anyway? You sound like a pair of hyenas. Nothing's going on. Up. We're just studying. Studying? Leroy, I've told you a thousand times, you can't concentrate on arithmetic in that zippity doodle at the same time. I'll turn that. Never mind, I'll do it myself. Oh, Unc, I wasn't even listening. The radio doesn't bother me. Honest, it just keeps me awake. It bothers me. You rat. That will do, Leroy. Your sister's marks demonstrate clearly that she has a sounder method of study than yours. You keep your nose in your book, young man. And if you need something to keep you awake, I will supply it. Okay, okay. All right. Now study. I'm gonna. Well, get at it. Why is it you keep postponing it? We all have to do things we dislike, you know. I don't mind it. I kind of enjoy it. What? Yeah, some of it's okay. This book's okay. I kind of like it. Well, now we're beginning to get at the root of this whole thing. Studying is not something to be enjoyed, Leroy. It's hard, grinding work. <laughs> Just reading a book. It's nothing of the kind. No wonder you're not learning anything. If you'd concentrate, you wouldn't enjoy it so much. Now, let me see you concentrate. What do you mean, concentrate? Do you mean to tell me your teacher hasn't taught you how to concentrate? What goes on at that school, anyway? I don't know. She just tells us to read the stuff. Reading it is worthless. You've got to chew it over in your mind, my boy. Concentrate on it. Get the meat out of it. Think about every word. Start doing it right, and you'll learn something. Now, I'm going to help you, Leroy. How? I'm going to sit right here and see that you concentrate. You mean watch me? Exactly. Now, get going. I'll examine you when you're through. So don't think you can fool me. <sighs> Someday you'll thank me for this, Leroy. Yeah. The birdie will answer it, Leroy. You just keep working. I'm coming. Sit down, Leroy. If you knew how to concentrate, you wouldn't even hear that doorbell. I'm on my way now, Mr. Gilsley. Good. Oh, no, Miss Rathen, he's all through. I'm halfway through the station. Right. Well, I wonder if I could... Miss Rathen, Mr. Gilsey, shall I send her in? By all means, Betty. Come on in, Leela. Oh, good evening, Charles Martin. Oh, uh, don't get up. Huh? Oh. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Hello, Marjorie. Leroy. Hi. Hi, Mrs. Ransom. <laughs> Leroy is learning how to study, Leela. Oh, that's just fine. I certainly won't disturb him. Uh, Rock Martin, you've got to go to the Majestic with me and see a picture. I've been saving it for you. Saving a picture? Oh, you know what I mean. There are some pictures that just don't mean a thing unless you go with somebody. You have to see them with exactly the right person or you don't enjoy them. This picture needs your sense of humor, Rock Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'd like to go, Leela, but I promised Leroy I'd show him how to study. The boy doesn't seem to know how to drive himself with his books. 
just been waltzing through history instead of digging at it. Oh, poor Leroy. I know how that is. Well, anyway, I've got to stick right here, Leela. Sorry. Well, gracious, Leroy isn't going to study all night, is he? Uh, the next show doesn't start till 8.20. You think possibly? Uh, Leroy? Sure, I'll be finished long before then. I don't want you to skimp, my boy. I want you to keep digging. Keep chewing every word. Okay. Uh, Leela. Hmm? Why don't we just sit here on the sofa? Uh, would you mind, Marjorie? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just waltzing through geometry. <laughs> uh, Leela, you mm -hmm. and I can sit here and look at a magazine or something, so we won't bother Leroy. All right. And we'll be just as quiet as two little church mice. He won't even know we're here. That's right. <laughs> You, uh, don't have the ladies' home journal, do you? No. Uh, Colliers, they have funny cartoons. Mm. <laughs> Look at this. Little Lulu. What? Oh. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Leroy. That's okay. Maybe I can study upstairs better. Oh, no, you don't. You stay right here where I can help you. <laughs> Here's a darling one. Hmm? <laughs> Look, mm. a dog in a policeman's suit. <laughs> Gosh. Mentioning this, Rock Martin, but what time is it? Uh, let's see. Five after eight. Mm, thank you, my dear. Uh, don't you think we? Yes, Leroy, aren't you pretty near finished? Pretty near. Doesn't go as fast with your system. That's why my system is better. Uh, Mrs. Ransom and I have to go now. Are you uh, prepared? I guess so. I've only got about another half a page. The important question is: Have you learned anything? Do you see how concentration helps? Oh, you bet. Well, what have you been studying? History, is it? Let me see that book. We ought to go, Throckmorton. Just want to check up a little here, Leela. We can drive down. Mm. Uh, now, which was the lesson you were supposed to learn? Here, chapter 22, Customs of the Pilgrims. Oh, American history. Well, I don't need the book. Let's see. Uh, when did we fight the Revolutionary War? I don't know. What? We're up to it yet. Up to it? <laughs> Gee, gods, Leroy, that's where American history starts. Well, Leroy's only on the Pilgrims. They were 150 years before the Revolution. I'll handle this, my dear. Yes, they were at that. Uh, can we go now, Throckmorton? In just a second, Leela. Got to find out if this boy has learned his lesson. Uh, pilgrims, eh? Well, who is Captain Miles Standish? I think we had him last week. Never mind when you had him. <laughs> Who was he? Uh, was he the captain of the Mayflower? He was not. He married John Alden. I mean Priscilla. <laughs> Confounded, don't you know anything? Sure, I know plenty. You don't know any history. What do you learn at that school? Can you spell? I can spell some. Well, let's hear you spell, uh, separate. I don't think we've had it. Spell it! <laughs> S-E-P-P-E... -P -P Wrong. Never mind. How much is nine times nine? Quick. Uh, that settles it. I'll have a talk with your teacher tomorrow morning. I'll get you one. Too late. Get your things on, Leela. Mercy, I've been all ready for ten minutes. Where's my hat? It's clear, Leroy, that you've never learned anything. And I'm going to find out why. I'll go to school with you tomorrow and... Oh, please, don't take me to school. I'll study even harder. I'll come. That will do, Leroy. What are you going to see? It's the, uh, uh, what is it, Leela? Oh, I know you love it, Throckmorton. It's the egg and I. <laughs> More about the great Gildersleeve in just a minute. Right now, a word from the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine. Delicious, flavor-fresh parquet margarine is the Kraft quality margarine uh, that... Good evening, friend. Uh, here I am again to see that you keep your commercials brief and factual. 
So watch your step. Okay, I'll stick to the facts just as I always do. First, parquet margarine is a delicious spread for bread. Uh Uh-huh. It's also a tasty topper for rolls, muffins, pancakes, and waffles. I've tried parquet. I know that's true. There's nothing in the world so Uh, good as... Hold it now. No one has tried everything, so uh, tone that down a bit, huh? Well, let me put it this way. Parquet margarine is a craft-quality food product made from the finest of vegetable oils and other carefully selected American farm products. Well, that's more like it. You better wind things up now because we all want to hear more about the great Gildersleeve. Sure thing. Parquet contains 15,000 units of vitamin A per pound, and it's one of the best of the energy foods. You'll like Parquet for its smooth spreading texture and its delightful fresh flavor. Try it and you'll join the millions of women all over America who serve Parquet Margarine because it tastes so good. That's Parquet Margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's wonderful. Enough said. Now let's get back to Gildersleeve, if we can catch up with him. He and Leroy are hurrying to school. You're not late, Leroy. The bell hasn't rung yet. So. It has not. Look at all those children still out on the playground. That's the B-5. They're having recess. Recess? They start with recess the first thing in the morning? Yeah, sure. No wonder the children don't learn anything in this school. <laughs> My George, nine o'clock recess. Recess for what? They get to school and right away they start out with a play period. They have to do that. There aren't seats enough for all of them. Huh? What do you mean? Half the class has recess while the other half gets tossed. Next period, they switch. <laughs> Fine way to run a school. You ought to see our class. Donald Casper and George McPherson have to sit on the windowsill. <laughs> Leroy, what are you going around there for? Let's go in this door. No, I have to go around here. What for? This way is shorter, more direct. Well, we're not allowed to use that door, Uncle. It's against the rules. Nonsense. Come along. Gives us heck if we get caught coming in this way. Miss Goodwin's a friend of mine. I'll take that chance. Come on, inside. Okay, but I'll get in trouble. Your uncle's a member of the school board, remember? I told you I'd be late. Don't worry, you're with me. Jane Hubble. Yes, sir. Esther Penalty. Yes, sir. Walter Lasher. Which way here, Leroy? Up the stairs. Say, now, if you have to talk to somebody, why don't you talk to Miss Goodman? She's the principal, and then you wouldn't have to interrupt Because the I want to talk to your teacher. She's the one who's responsible for what you learn, or what you don't learn. Gosh, I'll die if you come in there, huh? We won't argue any more about it, Leroy. Which way? Down here. Is this your room, Leroy? That's it. Where's my room? Dolly, I know. Please, please. Is that her? That's her. Miss Wally, should I put the flowers in water? Yes, I am. I can't find my room. If somebody swiped it, I have it. It's not my room. Put it in water. I'm going to finish my bath. No, Robert. Robert, no. What's her name again? Miss Wiley. But she's busy. You can see she's busy. Where Why don't you come room? back some other time? Oh, oh, children, oh, please. Oh, I want to know what it is. Children, you silence. What? Silence. Please. We have so much to do. Now, take your seat. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, well, don't. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yes? Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I wonder if I could have a word with you. Well, uh, uh, well, uh, just a minute, please. Class, suppose you just review for a few minutes what we did yesterday in arithmetic. Get your books out and just review quietly to yourself. I'll be right back. You wanted to see... Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, yes. Leroy's father. His uncle. Oh, yes, his uncle. I'm sorry. I have so many. I'm sorry. I'm late, Miss Wiley. I didn't bring an excuse. It's all right, Leroy. Just take your seat. Miss Wiley, I'll be brief. I came down here to find out why Leroy isn't learning anything. Uh, Why he isn't... I don't think he's doing any worse than the average in the class. As a matter of fact, he's... Then all I can say, it doesn't speak very well for the class. Oh, Go take your seat, Leroy. I'll handle it. Children, this. children, just hand to your books, please. 
Well? Well, Mr... Gildersleeve. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't know what to say. We do the best we can. The children try. I know they do. Robert, no. But it's hard for them, and it's hard for all of us. You see... I'm not blaming the children. Leroy is as smart as anybody. After all, he's my nephew. But he doesn't learn anything. He doesn't know anything. He comes home, I ask him a simple question about, well, anything. I'm afraid you don't understand our problem, Mr... Gildersleeve. Uh, yes. I understand the problem, and it's as simple as ABC. The problem is to pound some learning into them. Now, if they got the proper discipline here and the proper instruction... Mr. Gildersleeve... The kind I got when I was a boy... I don't know who you are to come down here in the middle of class and complain I'm about... I'm a taxpayer, that's who I am. Well, go on home, you Children! Oh, who said that? Pick up somebody your own size. Mm. Children, please! In case you didn't know, miss, I happen to be a member of the school board. It might pay you to remember that. Then I should think you'd realize I have 48 children in this class. We have two sessions. It's all day, every day, and evenings, and weekends, too. It's more than I can handle. It's just more than I can handle. You go home and let this alone. Children. Yeah, you go home. Oh, you yeah. yeah. you big fat. Oh. <laughs> Who threw that eraser? Leroy! 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 Uh, well, Eve, I didn't see you standing there. Good morning, Throckmorton. Just what's going on here? I'm sorry, Miss Goodwin. I things got a little out of hand here. Why don't you just go down to the teacher's room for a little while? I'll take over. Things have got too much for me. I'm sorry. I understand. Don't worry. Go have a cigarette. Thank you. I don't know why. Uh, you let the teachers smoke here? Just in their restroom, of course. Why? What kind of an example is that for the children? You smoke at home, don't you? Uh, that's different. <laughs> well, I don't see how. Teachers are people, you know. They have to have some rights. Excuse me. Robert Rosenblum, you're in charge of the class until Miss Wiley returns. I expect you to maintain order. Yes, Miss Goodwin. Come along, Throckmorton. I'd like you to come down to my office with me. Okay, you kids. Let's have a quiet now. First one that starts anything, I'm going to bop him. Sit down, Throckmorton. Uh, here? Anywhere. Well, nice to see you, Eve. I, uh... Just what was your purpose in coming down here this morning? Well, I just dropped in for a little chat with Leroy's teacher. I thought... That... I know. I heard you. Heaven protect me from hysterical women. I'm glad you're not that kind, Eve. Miss Wiley is one of our most competent and most valued teachers. The children adore her, and rightly. She happens... Oh, to... let's face it, Eve. She may be a lovely person and all that, but the woman is obviously a hysterical type. And that's not the kind to be handling children. Such carrying on. I Rock never... Morton. Yes? Yeah. Have you the slightest idea what it is to be a teacher these days? Well, I am sure. I don't think you have. Well, I'm on the school board. I ought to know something. I didn't see you at the last meeting. Uh, no, I was busy. Or the one before that. Oh, that one. I've forgotten why I couldn't make that. <laughs> anyway, well, we don't get paid hardly anything, you know, Eve. It's mostly honorary. The teachers are paid hardly anything, too. But they're down here every day, all day long. And nobody honors them for it. Instead, people like you come down here and find fault with them and order them about like servants. Well, you got me wrong, Eve. I just wanted to know why. Why? Why isn't my little boy learning anything? I'll tell you why. Because we've got just about twice as many children here as we can handle. There aren't enough seats. There isn't enough equipment. It's old. The textbooks are out of date. We can't hope to teach as we'd like to, Throckmorton. All we can do is try to keep order and hope. Just hope that somehow they'll learn something. Well, if things are so bad... They are, believe me. And why haven't you taken it up with the school board? I've taken it up with the school board over and over again. Perhaps you've missed those meetings. All they do is give me long explanations about why nothing whatever can be done. Materials are hard to find. We mustn't raise the tax rate. We mustn't overexpand. Maybe some people will move away and there won't be so many children. Well, that's true about building materials. Hogan Brothers were able to build an annex on their store. Where did they get the materials? Well, that's the point. 
Meanwhile, three of our teachers have resigned for next year. And I don't blame them. Why would anybody want to be a teacher? Why? Well, I... They're overworked. They're underpaid. They have to try to dress respectably on nothing a week. Because, oh, dear, we must be respectable at all times. Yes, indeed. Why, Mrs. Vernon has to work in the 5 and 10 on Saturdays and all through vacation just to support her one child. And Miss Dorcas has to work at the library evenings after teaching all day. We get no help, no encouragement, no gratitude, no, no respect even. Sometimes it gets so I just... I just... Eve, you aren't going to blow up now. <laughs> oh, it seems hopeless. The whole thing seems hopeless. I don't see how we can go on with it. Eve... You aren't thinking of quitting. Rockmorton, there isn't a teacher in the whole country who hasn't thought of quitting. Oh, you can't quit, Eve. That would be terrible. The whole school would fall apart if you quit. No one cares what happens to the school or the children either. No one cares but the teachers. Now, that's not true. People don't realize, that's all. Why, if I know... Now, you stay right here, Eve. You stay right here. Don't you go resigning or anything. I'll show you whether people care or not. <laughs> Mutually covenanted and agreed. Uh, Judge. Be with you in a few minutes, Gildy. You'll be with me right now, Judge. This is important. Very well. We'll continue with this later, Miss Carr. You close the door, please, going out. Well, what's so important? Judge, I want you to call a meeting of the school board tonight. We're not due for another meeting, Gildy, till, um, let's see, June 4th. Then call a special meeting. You're the president of the board, aren't you? I have that honor. Well, if you want to hold on to it, get on your horse. Call a meeting. By June 4th, we may have no school. Now, Gildy, I don't know what this is all about, but it's just another of your false alarms. Why, I passed the school only this morning. Well, there's a devil to pay down there, Judge. I'll tell you that. The teachers are up in arms. I have not been so advised. I'm advising you. Why, I passed there only this morning. You mean they're contemplating anything like a strike? I'm sure... They that... don't have to strike, you know, Judge. They can just quit. Just quietly quit. And that's what they're doing. Three of them have quit already for next year. Well, Gildy, there's always a certain amount of turnover among the teachers. I'm sure it's nothing to be alarmed about. Why, I passed the school only this morning. You told me that. You take the trouble to find out what's going on there instead of just passing it by. Why, the teachers haven't had a raise Gildy, since... the teachers have my complete sympathy and understanding. I think they know that. Why, I passed the school only this morning. Oh, for... But there are other things we have to think of. We're trying to hold taxes down. We have to think of that. She said you'd say that. Who did? Miss Goodwin. I don't mind telling you she's about ready to quit herself. Well, it's the end of the term. She's tired. She needs a vacation. I'd like a vacation myself. Listen, you old goat. I don't want to waste my time arguing with you. I want you to put this up to the board. Will you call a meeting? These are no new problems, Gildy. We've had them brought to our attention. No? I see no reason to call a meeting before our regular fortnight... Listen, either you call a meeting or I'll resign from the board here and now. How do you like that? I think that might be a very good idea. Then I won't do it. No, by George, I'll stick around. How, Gildy, you aren't going to be a troublemaker. You bet your sweet life I am. If I can't get you up off your hind quarters, you old goat, I'll go to some people who can. I'll go to the parents. We'll see what they have to say. Now, Gildy, we have our eye on these things. Why, I passed the school only this morning. <laughs> Gildersleeve, it's such a pleasure to have you with us. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Mrs. Pettibone. Yes, indeed. I warn you, I'm planning to monopolize you completely. <laughs> I do hope you're going to sing to the ladies. Well, that was not my purpose in asking to come here. I was hoping to be allowed to address your organization. Oh. Uh, briefly, that is. After all, these charming ladies are most of them parents and mothers, if the married ones. What was to be the topic of your address, may I ask? I want to tell them some things they ought to know about what's happening to our schools. It's really very serious. We've got to get people aroused. There's a lot of political... Oh, I'm afraid that might be rather controversial. Controversial? Of course it's controversial. It's one of the most controversial problems in this town, if people only knew it. Why, only... Oh, I'm sorry, but you see, we have a policy. We never allow anything controversial to be brought up at our meetings. Nothing? Nothing controversial, no. It keeps things so much pleasanter, we find. 
But I thought the women's club uh, was interested in education. Oh, it is. Yes, once a month we meet and serve tea like this and talk about things. But nothing controversial. I know you'll understand. We have a policy. Uh, perhaps you'll sing for us later. Uh, won't you have some cake? Oh, Mrs. Barnard, won't you pass Mr. Gildersleeve the cake? I give up. I give up. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stop pretending. This isn't just a story we made up about what might be going on in a mythical town named Summerfield. It's what's going on right now in almost every city and town in this country. Our schools are overcrowded. Our teachers are underpaid. Our children are being robbed. Robbed of an education at the only time in their lives they can get it. Very little is being done about it. Because of poor pay, overwork, and shabby treatment, teachers are leaving the teaching profession in droves. No new teachers are coming along to take their places. There's no inducement to anyone to become a teacher with things as they are. We have been proud of our public school system. Have we reason to be? In this country, only one in five-tenths percent of our national income is spent for education. In Great Britain, where they're having a tough go of it these days, they spend twice that. And who are we shortchanging? Our own children. The future of the world is in their hands. On every side of us, we see the ignorance and stupidity that can rush us into another war. The only cure for stupidity is education. For the sake of our national security, as well as for the sake of our children themselves, we must do all that we can to raise the level of education. You may not realize how bad the situation is. We urge you to go to your own child's school and find out for yourself. Find out how many children there are in his class. Find out whether he's getting what's coming to him. Find out whether your local school board is cutting corners at his expense. If they are, do something about it. You're the only one who can. Join the Parent Teachers Association or any other group interested in the welfare of your school. Don't just pay your dues. Take an active part. Insist that your child's teacher be paid a living wage. Insist that she be given the position of respect in the community that she deserves so that others will be attracted to the profession. Insist that your school board reduce the size of classes. Provide enough teachers and enough schoolrooms so that your child will get the attention he needs. If it means raising the tax rate a little, remember we're doing it for our children. They are the one last hope of the world. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Try it soon. See if you don't prefer parquet margarine's fine, fresh flavor to any other brand, as millions do. It's true. Every day, millions of women all over America serve parquet margarine because it tastes so good. Look first for the margarine of Kraft quality. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. To market, to market, to get some parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You like it, you love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine is parquet. Parquet margarine, P A R K A Y, it's wonderful. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Good night. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, Lillian Randolph, Shirley Mitchell, B. Benadaret, and Earl Ross. This is John Lang saying good night to the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> good night. Have you tried Pab Step? It's a cheese food that's really different. Rich in mellow cheddar cheese flavor, easy to serve in a variety of tempting ways. Pab Step spreads easily for sandwiches and snacks, melts smoothly into rich golden cheese sauces, slices in a distinctive way, for Pab Step can be cut into neat wedges when chilled for serving with fruit or pie dessert. Why not buy both varieties of this delicious, nourishing cheese food? Ask for golden cheddar Pab Step or pimento Pab Step. 
T-A-B-S-T hyphen E double T. Habstep Cheese Food. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.